Okay, so this video is not going to be about running fans. It's mostly going to be about uh, some of the theory behind why it's difficult to cool a house down via fans or ventilation. Okay, so I'm seeing the exact problem that this study outlined, and I thought I would share it with you because it gives some explanation as to why I can't seemingly drop the temperature further below um, you know, 83 degrees, which I actually did last night. It got actually about 82, but once again, that's not very drastic. It's still not meeting the outside temperature, and this video will explain why. So what they did in this study is they basically created a model. They created like a box, that's basically your home, and they created two windows in it to uh, simulate cross ventilation. Now both of the windows were the same height and about the same area. So everything was very, very uh, symmetrical. And they tested two driving forces. They tested wind as a driving force and then, then they tested uh, buoyancy. So the idea is that cold air is denser than hot air and for buoyancy to take place the cold air is going to come in the window and it's going to sink to the bottom it's going to fill up the room with cold air from the bottom up and that's pretty much what they model the other one was uh, what I'm trying to do which is basically ventilation where you're pushing wind in the house wind is coming out of the house and eventually that is circulating the building and you're uh, bringing it to a lower temperature than what the initial inside temperature was which I have achieved but not to a great extent Okay, so here's an illustration of the model. So you can see that red indicates the hot areas and blue indicates the cold areas. Now the blue is the coldest. And if you look from the beginning to the end, you can see how it progressively gets cooler over time. This is the wind-driven model, so they're basically pushing air in from the left to the right and it eventually cools down. You can kind of see a little bit of a stream going right across the middle as well. So you get good air mixing and pretty much eventually all the red goes away and it gets to a much cooler light blue. But an interesting note is that the outside of the box is still a darker color blue than the inside of the box. So in that given time frame they never quite achieved the outside temperature. So that's an interesting thing to note. Okay so here's the graph for the wind driven model. Now I'm getting real bad cotton mouth so bear with me. So on the x-axis you have the time that has elapsed and on the y-axis you have the temperature drop. Now you'll notice that the rate of temperature drop really declines from left to right as, uh, as time proceeds. You'll also notice a little box that says you have 18 millimeters per second all the way up to 39 millimeters per second flow. They tested all different flow rates. If you notice all those different flow rates they basically overlap each other. There's not much of a difference in the cooling effect with time or the rate of cooling dependent on the flow rate, which is really bizarre to me, but um, even doubling the flow rate had no substantial difference. So this should help answer a question about why in my little test that I can't get that temperature to drop a whole lot more. I seem to hit like that equilibrium point, which is pretty much a point of diminishing returns. And even despite pushing more air, it's very, very marginal differences. Also, you can see that with enough time you can eventually get it to cool but it takes a lot more time it almost takes like four times as much time and you know eventually you run out of nighttime and cool air and you get back to daytime with hot air so it's impossible to test this with time because we don't have all the time in the world we only have one night time okay so here we have the gravity driven or the buoyancy driven model this is primarily the model you would have if it was relatively low breeze outside and the, wa and the cold air was just kind of leaking into your home little by little. So you see event early on it starts off with hot air and then you see like this kind of white leaking in from both windows. Now there really isn't any cross ventilation. It's more like the room is just being filled up from the bottom up with cold air. However, you do notice that once the cold air, and it does seem to get even colder than the outside if you look at part D, it even is bluer than the outside which represents that it's actually colder on the inside than the outside at that point which is interesting but you do notice that you still have the red hot air at the top above the window so what it's basically saying is is that you're basically just filling up and kind of trapping that hot air and the overall temperature of this building doesn't necessarily drop nearly as quickly or nearly as much as the wind driven model but I do think a lot of these effects are what are also going on in my house and I'll show you a model that represents uh, a mix of both forces. Before we head on to the mixed model, let's take a look at the graph for the buoyancy driven model. 
and you can see that the buoyancy driven model essentially reaches an asymptote that dotted line at the bottom meaning it would not cool beyond 0 0.4 so no matter how much time once you have this um, buoyancy or this density driven model you hit a point where you can no longer cool the room beyond any amount of time it's just basically it levels off because you're trapping that hot air and it's being kind of insulated at the top and you're not getting significant mixing um, so this is a problem if this is what I think I've figured out in my house I think I have a little bit of this going on I think I'm trapping a little bit of that air and then that's also contributing to kind of like an equilibrium in my house okay so here's a mixed model and this one is a wind dominant model but it still has a little bit of a buoyancy effect to it this is the model and the visualization I think that most people are dealing with in their houses okay so if you don't have double hung windows this is probably going on in your house based on this model and based on my own personal experiences too um, now obviously hot pockets are not going to be just you know isolated to the ceiling sometimes they're going to be also isolated to particular rooms like I seemingly have a hot area between my kitchen and, and another bathroom where my thermostat is and I think that's um, contributing to some of this okay so I mean I think it's definitely my refrigerator is creating heat and some of that heat is just being isolated by the cool air and it's not really mixing out very well somehow some way so everybody's going to be different one thing that a lot of these um, studies have shown is that uh, the home geometry is going to dictate a lot and you're going to have to figure out for the geometry in your house what you have to do now looking simply at this box that they have created here you could simply say well put a ceiling fan up there and break up that hot air real quick that's a great idea one of my subscribers actually suggested that to me he said you know get a ceiling fan open the crack of the window and that'll create a draft and pull some cool air in so I think he's definitely on to something there and something he's figured out and uh, I think that also uh, is, shows some further universal truth here that breaking up that hot pocket will do well and uh, ceiling fans are heavily promoted by the Department of Energy so it makes a good amount of sense all around but I think for people who um, who have like hot rooms I think you have to take some different approaches because putting ceiling fans all over the place in every single room is going to be a real bitch I only have a ceiling fan in one room and that's my living room and uh, I don't even know if that thing works anymore to be quite honest um, but for me to go and start putting ceiling fans in my bedrooms no like that's that's gonna cost me a lot of money of rewiring I'm, I'm gonna have to break up drywall or have a guy come in and start to figure out creative ways to rewire that stuff and it's gonna be a headache so that's not gonna happen especially out of a house I intend on moving out of uh, hopefully in the near future okay so I'll share a trick that um, I read in the comments section I don't know if this works I've never tested it but someone personally swore by it and said it was amazing he said he had a, a hot uh, area in his home what he did was is he put a ceiling not a ceiling fan he took a regular fan and he put it up towards the ceiling so that it would suck hot air from up towards the ceiling and it would shoot that air out the window and he said like um, he said even the people who bought the house off of him said hey that's pretty cool you know so they kept the fan there and he said it works amazing so I don't know it's not something I think I can get away with doing because of where my windows are situated I don't have double hung windows so meaning they don't open up very high towards the ceiling they open up around midway so I'd have to back the fan off like far away from the window in order not to have it at too steep of an angle which would reduce the uh, kind of open area that the the cone of air has so there's not a lot of options for me to try that out um, I have had a crazy idea where I was thinking about getting some type of tube, some type of tube or hose, fairly thick tube or hose, and run that up to the ceiling and run that out the window and hope that like any of the shearing effect or the Bernoulli effect can create like suction along the outside of that, um, of that hose and that can create suction at the top of the ceiling and suck that air out. And then I wouldn't have to run an extra fan. I could just basically take advantage of like pressure differences in the Bernoulli equation. So we'll see if that works, but I'm going to have to invest a little bit of money. Maybe I can get like a dryer hose or something like that or something cheaper and see if that works pretty good. But then I'd have to figure out how to mount it. And that's going to look ugly as hell. <laughs> it's going to look very weird and ugly and some people are going to probably look at me and say what the fuck's going on with that tube or that hose in your house? Like well, what are you doing with that? Um, but I don't know maybe if it works really good maybe I'll try it out but yeah that's gonna be ugly as hell and uh, 
I don't know. I don't know if it'll provide much uh, extra things, but it might be worth testing for fun. You know, if I can go test it for ten bucks, you know, maybe that's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to end the video on this note, and so two things I'm going to test in future videos. The the next step is probably going to be testing uh, breaking up these hot pockets of air with my other fan, and my ceiling fan, stuff like that. So I'm going to see if my ceiling fan still works. I haven't run that thing in multiple years. Who knows? Um, going to test that and then I'm also going to test some more Bernoulli equation type stuff. Um, I came across something recently where somebody used an explanation of the Bernoulli effect with saying that's why when you uh, blow air out of your mouth with a small opening that you actually get a cooling effect. They say because that hot air is mixing very very quickly with the cooler air around it and it's creating a cooler effect. So it's quite possible that smaller openings on your windows can create a greater mixing effect via the Bernoulli effect. So that's it for the video. Hope you learned something. Uh, I know I'm learning stuff as I go along, but I'm trying to make good use of it. And, you know, thus far marginal results, but um, uh, better than what I've been getting.